Hi, I just want to do this quick recording on synchronous or live online teaching. Um, I feel that during the COVID pandemic, this began to be called Zoom classes and has been much criticized. But I would like to argue that um, if done well, and it's not particularly difficult to do it well, this can be quite an effective and valuable form of teaching. So essentially, it's real time communication. The both the teacher and the students are online at the same time. Um, so there's live video being streamed to the students and there's audio. And optionally, the students can stream their audio and video back uh, to the teacher and to the whole class as well. Um, the Lecturer teacher is able to share their screen uh, so they can show slides from PowerPoint or something like that. They can be working on an application. They can be uh, browsing the web and they can be showing the students what's going on on their screen. Or they may be able to use a document camera that allows them to work off a piece of paper and to show that to the students as well. Um, <clears throat> there's Text chat is usually students and are able to type questions or type comments that can be seen by the teacher or optionally the other students as well. The lecturer is able to share files. So if there's doc longer documents that they need to have on their machine for the uh, event, they can share that file and people can download the, those files locally. Um, the even extended features like translations, if people are not native speakers, the same language as the teacher, and this can be shown in captions or captions in the same language as the teacher that can help with understanding, uh, particularly for people who might have hearing issues. I'm going to give a few examples here of screen sharing. This is from a retired lecturer, Eugene O'Loughlin, um, who has great videos on YouTube on, uh, on statistics. Uh, this particular image is of him sharing a PowerPoint slide. Um, this image is of him sharing an activity that he's doing in Microsoft Excel. So he's showing an application and this particular one is of him using a document camera so that he can record or uh, demonstrate or stream what he's doing on a piece of paper. Those are the types of things and you can replicate a lot of what you might do in the classroom just by these three simple techniques here. So it's quite effective. Um, <laughs> There is great scope for interactivity and engagement. Um, uh, as I mentioned, the text chat before, uh, you can have polling and quizzes. In fact, some people can say that you can have more interactivity in a, in a Zoom class or a live synchronous class because you can allow people to you can have lots of people texting, whereas you could only have one people, person speaking in the class. You can also have people put up their hand and speak as well. But you can poll the class and see what their reaction is to a certain thing and maybe spontaneously change how you teach as you go along. You can have quizzes that would gauge the knowledge of the class about a topic and allow you to modify as you go along as well. Um, so people can do reactions as well as raising their hand, they can do other reactions. And what's particularly useful that has appeared in a few tools is the confusion reaction. So that if people react that they're confused and you begin to see that there's a lot of confusion in the class, you can change your teaching as you go along. So it allows for that interactivity. Also, there is usually the facility for the students to break out into smaller groups where they can have online discussions, which replicates a feature that you might have in a real classroom as well. Um, what are the benefits of doing classes live rather than providing materials, recorded materials or other types of materials online? Well, they say it's helpful for building relationships because you're having a conversation between the teacher and students. Admittedly, it may be at a distance, but it may be better than doing a recording like this for building those relationships. Uh, as the person teaches, 
they get immediate feedback so uh, they can change how they do it um, so that can be useful uh, one of the benefits is that it's extremely familiar to the students. They're used to sitting in a class, so they're used to this idea as well of attending class. It makes it easier for them uh, to relate to the experience of attending a class live online. Probably more importantly is the familiarity to the lectures because the lecturer does not have to learn an awful lot more skills. They just have to learn to use the synchronous tool. They probably would be using a blackboard which they can replace with a piece of paper and a document camera. They probably would be using sharing applications on the screen or sharing PowerPoint uh, up on the board in a real classroom so there's not much different there. So it's very familiar for lectures. And as I say the spontaneity is helpful as well. It makes it more engaging for the students if lectures can be spontaneity. Uh, even talking about last night's football match. You know those sort of things make it more relatable and help with building relationships. A very important thing for organizations is that to start teaching a distance learning this way, there's very little extra costs in it because you're just asking the academics to take what they're doing in the classroom and to move it into a, a synchronous live online classroom. So there's very little development cost. It becomes cost effective to teach classes online which were almost as small as those that you would teach in the evening if you were teaching to adults or you would teach during the day. There aren't those big development costs. It's really easy to get guest lectures involved. They can be anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world and they just can come into the meeting and present as well, which is really of interest to students and particularly adult learners or continuing education learners. We can generate recordings miss classes for all sorts of valid reasons it's great to have recordings also people value recordings when they're preparing for assignments or examinations now i should say here that um, uh, it also allows you to replicate poor classroom practice so if it's bad face to face it could be bad online as well so you have to watch out for that and probably if you're going to decide to teach online it might be no harm to try and up the standard of classroom practice in the first place so thank you very much for watching